Hello and welcome. I hope you're doing well. Come and get cozy as I share with you some absolutely terrifying encounters. I post new videos every day, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be notified when new daily content arrives on my channel. All right, let's get right into it. In Fountain County in Indiana, at 5.50 a.m. on November 22nd, a deer hunter was standing in his tree stand holding a 12-gauge rifled-barreled shotgun when suddenly he heard a deep, evil-sounding voice. It sounded like a demon taking deep breaths, amplified in comparison to anything he had ever heard. After two deep exhales, it started to snort and bellow. He looked in the direction in which the sound was coming from and caught a glimpse of a dark figure about seven to nine feet tall standing upright. As he looked at it through his rifle scope, it bellowed even louder. The hunter quickly left the area but heard similar sounds 20 minutes later. On to the next one. Between Des Moines and Van Meter in Dallas County in Iowa, my house sits in front of a rather large patch of timber. Our freshman year of high school just got out for summer vacation, and we were celebrating in the timber at the campout. It was just getting dark outside, so we decided to build a fire. The four of us finished our supper and were sitting around the fire just talking. Soon, it was pitch black outside and you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. We got out our flashlights and decided to go to the tent we had set up earlier. The next thing that happened, I'm not really sure about what time it was, but it was still very dark outside. We all woke up to the sound of rustling in the leaves. We assumed it was just a raccoon eating the leftover scraps of food, but then there was a strange grunting sound, sounding like some sort of thick cow or something, and heavy, raspy breathing. Also, there was a reeking stench, almost like rotten eggs. We all thought it was somebody playing a prank on us, but in the middle of the night? And how would they find us out in the middle of the woods? We all went out of the tent to look around, and sure, it was just nothing. As we unzipped the tent, we all went out of the tent to look around. Sure, it was just nothing. As we unzipped the tent, the rustling stopped, and the breathing slowed down a little. As we poked our head out of the opening, we caught a glimpse of him. I'm still not sure of what I saw that night. In proportion to the tree he was standing near, when we saw him, his head came close to hitting a branch, which seemed to be a little less than seven feet tall. He was hairy and had reddish-brown fur. Once the four of us talked about what we saw, we all had seen the same thing, a glimpse of him walking away. I think he seemed maybe a little afraid of us. For what reason, I do not know. He was too far away to distinctly see his eyes. All I can tell you is that we only saw his backside, reddish brown fur, and he was very tall. The woods we were in are located about 10 to 15 miles west of Des Moines. I don't know how I could tell you how to get there. The timber is very thick back in there, so it's hard to say. The timber is behind my house, so it shouldn't be hard to find. As for the food he could have been attracted to, we had leftover bags of potato chips, hot dogs, and buns, s'mores, chocolate bars, graham crackers, and marshmallows, some fresh fruit, apples, bananas, and oranges. I can't think of anything else at this moment, but just general snacks and food for open campfires. His body was pretty strange, as to the proportions in question. Big hands, and most likely big feet too, tall and large biceps and upper leg muscles from what I could tell, and long hair covered his whole body, from what we could see. I can't remember a lot more about this creature. He, or she, I suppose, seemed very frightened at the sight of humans. He wasn't afraid of the campfire, it seemed, although it was just smoke by this time. My guess is that he was attracted to the fruit, most likely. The fruit 
was the strongest smelling piece of food we had. On to the next one. Near Michelleville in Colfax in Jasper County in Iowa, there was a lot of cover in the timber close to South Skunk River and corn and bean fields. Hello, I had my first encounter about 18 years ago. I lived at that time at my parents' house. Me and my cousin were chilling on this log in a ravine, talking, and out of the corner of my eye, I saw his dog chasing a rabbit. Then, when I looked back a couple of minutes later, I saw the rabbit chasing the dog. I thought that was strange, but didn't think anything of it. We headed back up the hill to the gate, and when I shut the gate, and ready to lock it up, that's when we heard this blood-curdling growl and howl. We both looked at each other and ran down the hill and jumped the electric fence and up the hill by our grandpa's building. I looked back, and there it was. It was so tall and stared at us for about 20 seconds. Then I saw him turn and head back down into the woods. And then, about two years ago, I found the stick structure shed while I was hunting, which looked out of place and odd. Then last year, when deer hunting, I'd seen this thing run through the woods and heard branches breaking while leaning on a tree waiting for a deer. It was very frightening, and I didn't want to move. South Skunk River is close to our place, too. We were down in a ravine in the timber by a pond. I also noticed that the stick structure looked like a bedding area. It was in the afternoon around lunchtime, partly sunny. The second time I saw this figure was early morning watching deer in preparation for deer hunting. I had been out one hour to one and a half hours watching deer. I heard the crunch breaking sound and thought it was a deer. I saw a reddish black colored figure on all fours running. Distance was about 75 to 80 yards away. On to the next one. This was in Missouri Valley in Pottawatomie County in Iowa. My name is Todd Davis. Myself and my friend Brian J. went camping at Wilson Island State Park. This park is connected to Desto Bend National Wildlife Refuge in Iowa. Well, here is my account of what happened. It was approximately 2.55 a.m. when I was awakened by the sound of footsteps in the dry leaves. It circled my tent and stopped directly behind my head. Being half awake, I assumed it was my friend Brian getting up to go to the bathroom in the bushes. But then I heard the sound of Brian unzipping his tent and so I realized it wasn't Brian. When I jumped up to go outside of my tent, whatever it was standing behind my tent took off, plowing through the trees, heading to the Missouri River, which was about 300 meters from our campsite. Anyway, when we both climbed out of our tents, we were afraid because Brian thought I was walking around his tent trying to scare him. When we realized we were both inside our tent at the same time, it gave us a very spooky feeling. I guess what bothered us the most was that we were the only people in the campground. We pondered the possibility of it being a hunter, but why would a hunter be out at 2.55 a.m. in a state park? Well, neither one of us thought anything, but I have never felt like that before. The whole night, we both felt like we were being watched. Prior to the incident, at around 8 p.m., we heard a couple of screams. It kind of sounded like a woman crying or the sound a rabbit makes when it's getting killed. Also, it was very quiet and still. We didn't see anything, but we both heard the heavy footsteps around our campsite. I mean, they were so loud it woke us up. I heard about 10 years ago that a truck driver saw something cross the highway by Esterville, Iowa. They said it had brownish-orange hair and was six feet tall. This was very early morning, at about 2.55 a.m. It was a clear night with no moon, very mild temperature for December, about 32 degrees, dark and no wind. The environment has some floodplains, but mostly tall cottonwood forest, with lots of underbrush with creeks and ponds. It's about eight miles west of Lois Hills. 
on to the next one. The coolest thing about this story was that prior to this event, I used to ridicule those who spoke of Bigfoot. I mean, I was anti-Bigfoot to the point of cursing you out if I heard you talking about this monster. But that all changed in August of 1984 while hunting wolverines in the Bear Tooth Mountains of Montana. I was three days out in the hunt, spending every night under the stars, tracking every day. I had already bagged one wolverine and was hoping for another. I have to say that I was a darn good tracker. And to me, it was more about honing my skill set and tracking than it was about shooting anything. Being more about the track and the sighting than it was about the takedown. On the third day of the hunt, I was hot on the trail of another wolverine and was working my way through a path in the Beartooth Mountains. There was a long and gradual slope running up the side of the mountain on my right, which was both wind and rain rutted, with piles of rocks and large boulders here and there. I knew the tendencies and patterns that were associated with these critters so well that I wasn't walking with my head down, but rather occasionally glancing here and there to make sure I was still square with what I was following. Rarely, things would get a little trashed, particularly around rock formations where I would have to stop and refocus my tracks. Other than that, I was pretty much walking like you or anyone else would. The sky was azure blue and cloudless. It was about 9.30 in the morning. So there I was walking along when a big rock came into my field of view on the right side and went flying across about 40 feet in front of me bouncing and rolling to a stop. The first thing I did was to look at my right, and seeing nothing as I was still somewhat looking at the slope, I went to retrieve the rock. Now, holding it in my hand, this rock weighed about three or four pounds, and looking front on at the sloping side of the mountain, the closest place with any type of cover at all was at least a couple of hundred feet away. Being some of these piles of rocks and boulders, I knew what had just happened, and this was by no means a dream or hallucination. Something had just thrown a large rock two, if not more, hundred feet across the path in front of me. I knelt down and stared at every aspect of the hillside, waiting for something to reveal itself, and then it happened. Out from behind one of these boulder piles, a head covered in dark fur, leaned out from behind a rock, looked in my direction, and then leaned back behind the boulder. Before I continue, I have put lead in every variety of creature in the state, and I knew what I was looking at and not looking at. Just to give you a short list of some of the larger animals I have taken, I am talking about black bear, grizzlies, bighorn sheep, bobcat, Canadian lynx, caribou, moose, mountain goat, and mule deer, and that is just the short list. I stood there staring, and I remember mouthing to myself, son of a bitch, a Bigfoot. I knew immediately what it was. Not wanting to let on that I was staring at it, I turned to my left while looking out of my peripheral vision in the hope that it would expose itself again, and it did. It stuck the side of its head out, and appeared to be looking with one eye, watching what I was doing, and then it ducked behind the rocks again. To me, the thought came to my mind that it was somewhat stupid, and I will tell you why. It reminded me of when I was pulling in my driveway one night, and a raccoon ran up a tree, being scared by my approach. This raccoon, with my bright beams on, kept peeking out from behind the tree to look at me, as though it was hidden and I didn't see it. This Bigfoot acted the same way, in that we were eye to eye for about 15 seconds the first time I saw it, and it apparently didn't make the connection. The funny thing was that this pile of boulders it was behind was not that high at all. The largest of the boulders was maybe three or four feet tall, which led me to believe it was lying down behind them. In my mind, 
I wasn't going to leave until I saw it stand up and walk, wanting a complete and unequivocal confirmation of the sighting. So I began to kind of wander around as though I was looking at the ground, gradually moving further away from the slope while keeping a side view of the hill at all times. And if and when it did move, it would have to do so completely in the open. And I knew it. For 30 minutes, I kept doing this. And twice, I saw it move its head out from behind the rocks as it had before. Finally, I decided to move on a southeast angle toward the trees, which were several hundred yards away from where I started. The Bigfoot stood up, then ran down and away along the slope. It was taking enormous leaps and bound. Something in the neighborhood of what I would estimate to be 15 or 20 feet per lap, which was absolutely amazing to see. It was huge and burly in shape, with the prototypical huge feet and long arms that everyone has spoken about, based purely on my estimate of the largest boulder being about four feet tall when the Bigfoot launched. And I do mean launched. It was more than likely eight or nine feet tall. It was dark brown with red hues to its hair. The sun was shining on it like a long-haired pony. And I could see some of the long hair trailing behind it as it bounded down the slope. It was utterly remarkable as I watched it run about 150 yards and out of sight. I stood there wondering what the Bigfoot was doing there, where it was lying down, and why it had thrown the rock in the first place. That is a question I have no answer for. Why bring attention to yourself only to hide? This thing is so big and fast and obviously strong that I thought it may have been at higher elevations trying for a bighorn. But then I realized that there were lots of small creatures hidden in the nooks, crannies, and rocks of the mountains that would be easy pickings for such a beast. I never saw the Bigfoot again in Montana, and four years later, I moved to South Carolina for a good job. I had spent thousands of hours tracking in all corners of the state over many years, having never seen a print or any indication of them being there. That was part of the reason I would get so pissed off when people claimed they had seen them, thinking that if anyone would see them, it would have been me. Well, now I had. I hope you enjoyed those encounters. And if you did, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. I post new content every single day, so be sure to hit that notification bell, and you'll be notified exactly when that new content arrives on my channel. Again, thank you so much, and until next time, bye!